I would like to be allowed not to, to address the whole protocol, but I'd like to address, first of all, Oweki Wakatikiro, Charles Peter Maika, chief guest here, our host, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Barnabas Nawangui, and all your staff, and of course, all the members of the Bwakabaka of Uganda who have come with the Oweki Wakatikiro Maika, including the former Katikiro Mwanyamwi. Please accept my welcoming all of you. I welcome all the staff. I am going to address all the staff of Makerere University and all who have made the effort to make all this preparation. have been introduced already. And I'll start by saying that on behalf of the wider Martin, Martin Luther family, and on my own behalf, this lecture gives utmost honor to our father our grandfather, and our great-grandfather, that he could be honored in this manner and in his memory when celebrating how many years of Makere University. He died in 1945, when almost none of you here were born. Nsiwira was born in 1983 in Kirindi Bugerere County in the present day Mukono district. This was 30 years before Makerere Institution in its original form down there, I understand, was born in 1922. And he was by then a Gombola chief in Kasao, Chagwe. Needless to say, due to the date of his birth, he never had any formal ed schooling. It was his maternity uncle, maternal uncle, sorry, maternal uncle, Temtewo Murondo, who took him to the home of Katikira Parukagwa of Uganda. And he lived there as a page boy where he then learned to serve elders and to run errands. Page learned servant serving, good manners, and respecting people. That was his basic and ultimate education or schooling. I can say he got education later through, uh, through being under but schooling, he didn't have more than that. He taught himself reading, writing, and basic arithmetic. By looking at the letters, he delivered as he traveled by bicycle to Buganda Saza chief headquarters. He was baptized in 1895, aged between 12 and 13 years, in the Anglican Church. We always wondered how he got that name, Martin Luther. But most probably, Katikiro Sapro Kagwa chose the name Martin Luther for him. By the way, Sapro Kagwa, if some of you will know his his history was very, very enlightened. And so he must have known about the German Martin Luther, a seminal figure in the Protestant Reformation, 
which, which was a major movement within Western Christianity in 16th century Germany. He was a, a German. Sapporo Kagwa's administration was highly praised by the British Protectorate Administration. After his death in 1927, he was hailed as the greatest African statesman that had ever lived, that he stood out as a leader in civil and political life. So we can see that in Sibirwa had very good mentoring of administrative values under Katikiro Sapporo Kagwa for over 20 years. And Sibirwa was appointed a Saza chief in Bugerere and Singo from 1922 to 1927. Then appointed treasurer and finally Katikiro in 1929. All this period must have given him good administration, ability, and experience. About the end of 1940s, the British Protectorate Government of Uganda wished to establish a university to serve Uganda, Kenya, and Tanganyika. It was called Tanganyika then as the University of East Africa. And it needed that, and needed this to be at Makere College as the most suitable site for this institution. I understood that for too many reasons, this was a lovely, better, a better site than Nairobi, Nairobi College and Dar es Salaam College. And secondly, uh, 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 that was one reason. And secondly, the, um, there had not been then more, studi any, more students going there, go going to Nairobi or to Dar es Salaam, but Tanganyika, Tanzania, like Nyerere, as you know, there's Charles Njonjo who died two years ago, a um, hundred years, used to come to Makerere. So it seems that Makerere had better, was better equipped maybe, and had more teachers. It needed more land, but um, the East African, it, 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 um, as the University of East Africa, and it needed this to be at Makerere College as the most suitable site for this institution. I have repeated it. However, this, this needed more land to accommodate such an institution. And yet, to expand Makerere College was difficult as the adjacent land as well as, and, and the rest of the land that had, it has acquired belongs to private owners. Some belong to Crown land, I like think Corolla and elsewhere, but belong to private owners beyond Sapro Kagwa Road. And between Sapro Kagwa Road, from what I know, I remember that it belongs to private owners. The owners, some of whom were very influential and were chiefs, strongly objected to the idea of having their land exchanged for the purpose of extending the college into their land for the proposed university. But to cut the wrong story short, in 1900, the 1900 land agreement between British government and Uganda, and Uganda defined a relationship between the Kingdom of Uganda and Uganda Protectorate. The agreement had a clause 15. This clause proposed to allow the Protectorate government to take private owned 
Maryland for public use in exchange for another area on government crown land. But the private owners objected strongly to the idea. Nsibirwa, however, supported the idea. He was already Katikiro. The colonial officers had failed to convince the owners, and the Katikiro Buganda was the only authority who could sign this clause for government to own the land. Nsibirwa had land close to Mulago Hospital. This I remember well. And when the government wanted to build a nurse's hostel, he allowed the exchange of his land for land at Kansanga. And the hostel was built near Mulago Hospital. Nsibirwa being this, believing this to be in the best interest of the country, finally signed the clause on the 4th of September, 1945, and he was assassinated on the morning of the 5th September near Namirebe Cathedral Steps as he went for morning service. Nsibirwa lost his life but Makerere College gained a university status sooner than it could have been before he gave, the life, gave his life. So we say that he did not offer land. He didn't have land at Makerere, but he offered his life. I have two quotes which I wish to share in this lecture. One is by Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., which I believe is well known to many of you. And it is, and in it he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. It is in, in Atlanta, USA, his home where he, was, where he was born. There is a building in his memory called the Center for Social Change, which I was lucky to, to be visited in 1988. Then I went to visit my son in America. And I was given this card which bears this, this quotation which I gave you. This very card is one I was given. As I was preparing for this lecture, this quote came to my mind. So we can say that Martin Luther Sviro was ultimately measured as a man. The second quote is by Margaret Chase Smith. In it, the said public service, she said, public service must be more than doing a job efficiently and honestly. It must be a complete dedication to the people and to the nation. And I would think you believe with me that uh, Martin Luther and Sviwa, whom you, was, you have, my, the university has decided to celebrate his life in this wonderful way, is fits in this. He was dedicated to the people and to the nation. <laughs> At this lecture, the administration of Makere University has indicated in the letters I received before today that in Sweetwater's life stands tall in a hundred years. I can see from all this, which I should have started with actually to appreciate, I've been appreciating it, sharing it with my neighbor, saying, uh, 
can't understand how they could take all this trouble to celebrate my father. He stands tall in a hundred years in this lecture. We, the Sweeper family, are very much touched by his recognition, as my nephew, which he was has already expressed. Tad by touch with this recognition of his contribution. And we want to say once more on this day our deep appreciation that one student's hall was named after him in 1997 in Sibirwa Hall. We, his family, we, his family, have always been amazed that our father, grandfather, and great grandfather, who never attended any level of schooling, never sat in the classroom, could could believe in education with such determination and to believe that what the British protectorate government wished for Makerere and East Africa was in the best interest for the whole country. Hence, he became determined to make it possible whatever he could do in his power. In civil rights, sent all his children to the best schools at, at the time. My elder sisters were sent to Gaza High School and my big brothers to, to, to King's College Budo. And when Budo started to admit girls and became a co-educational school, he started to send girls there my little sister, Sarah, and myself, we are the first daughters to go there in 1937. Started in P2, because we had been in Gayaza for P1. And my sister, Sarah, yes, and myself were sent there. So he prized the education. As we celebrate my father here, as Makerere so honorably decided to honor him in this manner, which is really overwhelming, I once again say that Nsibirwa was ultimately measured as a man. Once more before I end, Mr. Vice Chancellor and all the you was the staff of the university, and Pankova Zambogo and everybody who in the art school who have been able to plan all this and to organize those, what I see here at the platform, please accept on behalf of my family, my, my father's grandchildren who are seated there, and myself, please accept our deep appreciation for what you've done to honor him. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I'm very grateful to be able to share this with you uh, in this time. And to be given the opportunity by the Makere University that we can share, can share with you his, my father's background, the civil we are celebrating in this manner. I'll just tell you, show with you that when it was 40 years after his death, which is 1985, we decided, and my, my, my sisters and brothers were still around, to celebrate him we had a, a service, and we went to our ancestral home in Namakomo, where we were also his pictures taken. And we decided to print 
using our grandchildren also to help to print the book, this, this, this booklet. And with Kiba Peter Maiga, please, again, I want to thank you that you did write the introduction here in this booklet in 1985. We are able to collect photographs of Sapporo Kagwa here, Sapporo Kagwa with his, with his family, some of his family. And, and I think this photograph comes from this booklet. And that's one of the photographs which we have in this booklet. We did, um, and we also took some pictures of Mr. Raho here. Uh, it says, it, we thought we wanted, we, we sold it. Uh, we didn't take it to the bookshops because we thought it wasn't good enough for selling and we oft, all the time wanted to update it and to improve on it, but this didn't happen. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. Telling him about all his life where he's been in the office. And I would like to, I, I did send a copy to the Vice Chancellor's office early this week. So we, pl we hope we plan to, up to, to improve on it and perhaps make it, which will include even this, this meeting today. Thank you very much for listening to me. May God bless you all.